Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another great edition of Racers News Network Live. We are going to be talking in about 10 minutes or so to J.P. Miller. We're going to be talking some pro mod, some top sportsman stuff um, that's going on in the, the southern part of our country. And also going to wrap up his 22 season and talk about, obviously, what is going on with this upcoming racing season here in 2023. Um, but a few things I would like to take a minute and mention that I've been meaning to, and well, I'm a dubber and I forgot. A um, couple of people that hang out on our Facebook page, of course, I'm talking about Kit G and Peter Medeiros, um, do an awesome job of every time I hit the, the little post button um, with all the new people that are joining our page to make sure that they reach out and greet them and let them know that they're uh, officially part of the fun house now. So I wanted to take a minute and recognize both Kit and Pete. And thank you very much for doing that. Also, Nick, you you play a role in that too, buddy. Every once in a while, you, you beat them to it or you chime in anyways, and that is okay. And thank you all very much. Um, Hoops Fire Prevention has come on a couple of weeks ago and they are now part of our team. And <clears throat> in case you haven't seen this, before tsr racing products based out of gilson new hampshire um over close to the vermont new hampshire border um contacted me today and are now also part of our team so tsr racing products transmission high performance parts and components uh if you have any questions and need parts i highly recommend that you give them a call uh their number their facebook their uh, excuse me their website is on our Facebook page, Racers News Network. So obviously TSR, for those that don't know, um, is also owned by the Monroe family. They're a family full of racers. Um, their son James, Mud Races. Um, Craig Monroe uh, races top sportsmen. And of course, uh, I'm sure everybody that tunes in and checks us out every week knows uh, about Will Monroe. Will race super gas, um, had an accident last year at Cecil County, but uh, came through on the bright side of everything. And they're now in the process of prepping a new car for him for this year. Also last September, him and his lovely bride, Kylie, got married. So congratulations to them. Um, but like I said, we're going to talk a little pro mod, some top sportsman stuff. It's going to be awesome. Just waiting for um, JP to come on with us. Uh, let's see. Northeast Division Banquet this past weekend held at the Hershey Lodge. All the winners were saluted. All the specialty award winners were handed out. And give me just one sec. I will scroll down our page. Um, you can find all that information about who won the special awards on Racers News Network on Facebook. So again, if you have any questions about who won, a, who won a trophy, who won an award, who got voted for what, we have it all for you. Give me just one sec, I'm gonna pull that entire list up. Um, one I can tell you driver of the year was the legendary Keith Mares. Not only did he win Super Street uh, in division one, he got voted uh, driver of the year. So let me just go down this. Uh, Dave Moan, the now retired director of Division I, was recognized for all his years of service in NHRA and uh, was also inducted into the Division I Hall of Fame. And of course, the legendary, I don't know, I say that word a lot, but you know what? That's okay because it definitely fits this gentleman, Frank Aragona, uh, who's battling some health issues right now, but uh, he's, he's chugging along and everybody's thinking about you, Frank. So these were made available this year um, at Maple Grove, Aragona Strong. Um, I'm not sure if there's any more available, but you can contact Richard Boyle. Um, he's on Facebook and uh, see if he has any more. But Frank was inducted also into the NHRA Division I Hall of Fame. So congratulations to him. 
Uh, he was not able to make the uh, the awards banquet, um, but his children, Frankie Jr. and Emma, were there to accept the award, the award on his behalf. Also, Wrench of the Year. Everybody knows Fast Freddie Perkins. Uh, his girlfriend, Carla, Carla Grella, uh, won the Wrench of the Year, and also Freddie took home the Northeast Division Person of the Year. Uh, E.T. Driver of the Year, Andy Anderson, uh, took his S-10 out to the uh, 2022 Summit Pro E.T. win, uh, the season-ending event in Vegas, so congratulations to him. And again, Keith Mayer's Super Street champ and also avoid, uh, avoided, awarded uh, Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series Driver of the Year with his complete. And it was. He basically had it wrapped up by, like, July. Uh, domination of Super Street in, his, in the Porsche. So Kyle Koretsky, uh, Northeast Division Track of the Year. And the always affable always smiling, William Massiello uh, won the Distinguished Service Award for all his years in keeping the racers straight on the staging line. So congratulations to Will. Uh, Image of Youth went to Brandon Miller, an all-around badass. Uh, kid drives everything. He was even in a uh, pro stock. So congratulations to him. Jackie Frick took home the top alcohol Eastern region, top alcohol dragster Eastern region title. Uh, DJ Cox took home top alcohol funny car Eastern region. Uh, comp eliminator, of course, went to Steve Zepka. And Mark Lebrec, first time Superstock division champ. Congratulations. Uh, Joe Santangelo won Stock Eliminator. Uh, Super Comp, Lee Ream. Super Gas, Rick Homan. Top Sportsman, Jeff Brooks. And let's see, what else? Pictures, those are just pictures. But that's all right. So anyways, I... Uh, uh, sounds like a good time was had by all. Um, so congratulations to everybody. Uh, Mr. Mr. Musser. Uh, da -da -da -da. So that is pretty much it. Um, in case you're wondering, Pete is off this week. He's getting ready to take his lovely wife to a little mini vacation for uh, Valentine's Day. So you guys have stuck with me. But on that note, um, next week, we are actually going to take Tuesday off because it's Valentine's Day. And you guys are all a, an amazing group of people, but... I would much rather look at my wife, and I'm sure you guys would much rather look at your wives or your girlfriends than stare at this mug right here. So, joining us now is our friend. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Just, just want to make sure before I give you this lovely intro. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm talking about uh, J.P. Miller. How are you, J.P.? Oh, pretty good. How are you been? Good, good. So it's been a little while since we 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 chatted, and uh, but looking around, it, it kind of sounds like you got some cool stuff cooking for twenty twenty three. Yeah, real excited about twenty twenty three. Um, so far we got three great events uh, that we're gonna we're gonna have. Um, of course, we're we're back at uh, MIR right at the end of April for Door Wars. Um, that's going to be a huge race. Um, we're, we're there along with Northeast Outlaw Pro Mod. And uh, this race was actually supposed to happen in September of last year. And it got rained out. And as you know, that late in the season, you know, you, you can't get another date. So um, they basically moved it 
to the end of April this year. Um, it's going to be a huge event for us, I think. Um, it's going to be a – I think we'll have a good turnout of cars. Uh, the purse is really good. Uh, we teamed up with uh, MSR Suspension on this one. Um, they are a presenting sponsor, and they have actually put up some extra money, um, and we've basically – added that to the purse all the way through uh, to make it make it a little bit of extra money for these guys to run for. So it, it ought to be a good time, man. Um, it's going to be, you know, four grand to win. That's nothing to sneeze at that for a 16 car field. So I, I'm hoping guys will come. Then in very May, cool. what were you saying? Oh, no, I said very cool. Yeah. Um, in May, um, we're actually we're going to uh, Maple Grove in May. Uh, we're going to do our quick 16 there at the Door Car Fury event. Um, so we're going to the House of Chaos. I'm excited about that. Never been to Maple Grove. Um, so I'm really excited to, to go up there and, and kind of bring our brand of top sportsmen in and, and, and you know, um, and see what we can do there. Uh, it should be a good event. Um, Pro My guys will be there, too. They got some other classes as well. I haven't got the complete rundown from the track on that yet, but we'll have a flyer out for that soon and we'll have more information. Um, if anybody hasn't seen, we have a lot of information about the April race and the flyers out for that one. So check out the JNR Facebook page, uh, my personal page. It's all over the place. Um, and then in October, October 6th to the 8th, we'll be back at MR for the Supercharger Showdown. Um, we'll be doing our Quick 16 there. Pro Mods will be there that day also, plus some other classes. Um, so I think it's going to be a good time. I'm really excited about 2023. And we might add another date in somewhere else. Um, I kind of got some things on the back burner in the works. I got to get some details figured out, so I'm not ready to announce something yet. But if everything works out, we may add one or two more dates to see. Very cool. Now, now backing up, to 2022 why don't we kind of let's wrap up how the season went for not only you as a competitor but as you know as a race promoter as well uh 2022 for jnr was not bad um we started out really really good at the door wars race um had a really good field of cars i think we had 26 or 28 cars show up trying to get into the 16 we had a bump spot of uh i think it was 465 um and had a really really good race uh my buddy Travis Butler won that one over uh over Derek Barnes um really tight final and it was kind of cool because those guys are buddies and they kind of you know Travis and them was helping Derek get his get his truck sorted out all weekend they were testing it so it was kind of cool to see them go to the final um Vonnie Mills was there. She ended up being number one qualifier at 416. Um, had a lot of quality cars there. Uh, NHRA world champion Ronnie Proctor, he was there. Uh, Ed Foley was there. A lot of, lot of well-known top sports and racers. So it was a really good race. Um, and then from there, we went to Motor Mile um, and we put on an event there. And uh, unfortunately, we had an on-track incident uh, three cars after three pairs down in, in the first round and then it rained and we weren't able to finish that so I basically just split the money because I couldn't call it a completed round because we only had like two pairs or three pairs down before the accident happened so I basically just split the money amongst uh, all the competitors I uh, gave the number one qualifier his money uh, that was Jeremy Curry he qualified number one I think at 445 or 446 uh we had right at 16 i don't recall what the bump spot was um but unfortunately we didn't get that one finished um and then we came to maryland in october well we were going to go to maryland in october and as you know everything that was going on that weekend rained out it was basically a wash on the east coast so we didn't get that one in and uh <clears throat> royce contacted me and said they were going to move everything over to April. And uh, if I'd like to be there, we were welcome to. And, you know, all of our sponsors decided to stay on. And, you know, we we got this event coming up. So it should be it should be a good event. I'm, I'm really looking, looking forward to the season. Hopefully we won't have any weather issues or any on-track issues or any of that stuff this year. And everything will go smooth and we'll have some great races. Uh, 
as a competitor for me, 2022 <laughs> was not very eventful. Um, <laughs> it, it, was, it, it was eventful, but just not the kind of eventful that you wanted, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got out to a few uh, local events and uh, got out to a couple PDRA events um, back in the summer, qualified PDRA, and uh, I think I ended up going out first round, and then we went to the World Finals, and uh, we tried some, well, I tried some things, trying to make the car accelerate harder, and it, it just didn't like it, and um, I basically, the car wouldn't go 60 feet, so we ended up not qualifying and it was just a bad weekend. Uh, came back a couple of weeks later and uh, we went and tested it, just made some half track passes and got our, got our, got our baseline back under. So we got something to build off of for this year. So I'm hoping to, uh, hoping to improve on all of that and, and have a little bit better showing with my car in 2023. <laughs> um, so uh, what makes you bang your head against the wall more promoting or driving or the equal? Uh, driving is not really, I don't really get frustrated driving unless I'm having a problem with the car because I'm the one that tunes it. And <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sitting in the car and I'm like, all right, is this going to work? So you got that in the back of your mind. When, once you get the car where it's, it's consistent and it's going down the track every time and it's repeating, then you can focus solely on driving. But when you're fighting suspension or fighting the tune up or what have you, it's harder to focus on driving because you always got it in the back of your mind, man, is this thing going to go? So I, maybe I need to step back and just hire a driver or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not quite ready to give it up yet. Uh, promoting is, I love promoting, but there are, there are aspects of promoting that will make you just want to beat your head up against the wall sometimes. And it, it's just, Dealing with, you know, you're always worried about weather. You know, you're worried about, you know, you're nervous up until the time you open the gates, and then you and 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 I'm usually jittery until basically Q1 when I start seeing cars pull into the lanes because you don't know, you know, you don't know if you're going to have a good turnout, you don't know if you're going to have a quality turnout. So it's always, you know, a gamble. I mean. You ride through the pits and you kind of look around and you kind of know who's there to run top sportsman and you kind of look and you kind of say, okay, you start relaxing a little bit, but you never know basically until you open the gate and until you start rolling them in for Q1. So, Just to see how uh, it roll and go from there, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I, I love doing both of them. I love racing. I love promoting. Um, I got into the promoting side of it just to try to give – you know, these type of cars, um, some more options to run for a little bit better person. So that's my goal. I mean, like I, I say, you know, I'm an advocate for the top sportsman guys. So, you know, it, it, that my goal is to showcase these cars because I think that they bring a good show for the fans and for the track. If you can get them in there and, and you can get a good field of cars. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, a lot of people don't know or they forget, you know, Pro Mod, which is probably the hottest class in drag racing right now, started in top sport, you know, back in the old IHRA days. And, you know, yeah. Friday night qualifying, they do the quick eights and all, the guys, all that stuff. And you had guys like, you know, Bill Coleman and, and, and Shannon Jenkins and all those guys. They were kind of at the forefront of this. So that, that's how that evolved. So I feel like that this class should be showcased as well because I feel like it's one of the premier door car classes. Very cool. Uh, now in your in your group that typically runs with you, what's the most dominant power adder that you have? Uh nitrous. Nitrous? Yeah. I would say it, it, it's the, the guy most of the guys that run with me are nitrous cars. I, I I we've got there's a couple there's a pro charger car out there that's the roots ball car a couple that I think that showed up. Um, I think he had some issues and he didn't actually run. I think he broke something, but and and there was another uh it's a Doug Doug for race. He he was there with his with his Corvette. Um, it's a beautiful car. It's actually the car on our flyer this year. Um and uh that's got a blow on it. But um it's mainly nitrous. Do you do you foresee the, the blower cars kind of 
maybe not necessarily completely going away, but maybe making the switch over to to spray or to a pro charger or something like that? Um, I don't think anybody that's running a supercharger will go back to nitrous. Usually it's the other way around. It's a it's a, a nitrous guy that had a big nitrous motor and then he decided he wanted something a little bit more laid back and low, low maintenance. So they go to like a, a pro charger or to like a roots board deal. Um, because nitrous can be a handful and it can be, it can be a lot of work. Um, when you're trying to get things sorted out. But I think once you get everything sorted out and you get a good baseline, I mean, I think they're just as consistent and, and just as repeatable as any other combination. Um, but, you know, some guys don't want to, don't want to have to check plugs, don't want to have to do any of that stuff. So they, you know, it's, they're probably more driven toward the pro charger where they can, you know, once they get that baseline, it's basically put fuel in the run. I think I'm not that familiar with it. Um, but from what I understand, talking to people who run it, it's 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 a whole lot more forgiving. I mean, if you run them hard, it's like anything else. You can break them. But I think in a top sports on application, you can get it fairly fast and fairly consistent without having to lean on it. Now, for those that aren't familiar, if it gets thrown around a lot, roots blower, screw blower, can you can you tell people the difference? in what what they are between a roots and a screw um there's a i think it's i'm, I'm not a blower guy but i think it's uh in the way that they're constructed in the way that the rotors are constructed inside of the case um i know the screw bone combination makes a whole lot more power i think it's i guess it's capable of forcing a whole lot more air in than a roots bone combination from what I know about them, but I'm not really a blower guy. I I'm, I'm still trying to figure out nitrous. So I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Nothing wrong with that. Um, so ha over the winter time, you got your, you got a chance to go to PRI. Now, was that your first visit to PRI? It was my first, my first trip to PRI. Now, did you walk by the the hall where they have have all the uh everything set up on your way to the breakfast and kind of peek in there and go holy crap uh yeah I when i first when i first got to the convention center i was just like wow uh because <laughs> i knew that it was big and i've been trying to go for a while but it's just always something came up where I wasn't able to go. And I actually got the opportunity this year to, um, and I got to give a shout out to uh, Rex Simmermaker and the Fast Brox podcast and, and uh, Chris Myers and all the Win Like That crew, because I got an opportunity to go kind of as their guest. And and I'm actually on a podcast with Rex. I co-host that with him now, um, but they were there and we actually got to do something live from out there. So it was pretty cool. Um, and I got to hang out with them and they were there promoting the win like best deal and all of that. So they were kind of taking me around and I had actually had some, some, uh, some of my sponsors were out there. So I got to, you know, meet some of them, put face to name and, 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 and it, it was cool in that aspect, but yeah, it, it's overwhelming. I, I didn't, I walked around a lot and I don't feel like I seen a quarter of what was there because when I got home, I seen a lot of posts that people were making from and companies were making. They were like, yeah, we were here from PRI at this booth. And I was like, I don't remember seeing any of that. So I, it, it's a lot to take in. I think you could spend the whole three days just walking around taking it in if you didn't have right. anything to do. Yeah, the first, the first time I went five, six years ago now, like I said, I, I walked by and one of the doors to the exhibition hall happened to be open and I just kind of stopped and wow yeah you know, um, like, it was yeah. it was phenomenal and 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 they've got so much other cool stuff going on like um that people don't even know about like the seminars and stuff i got to go to a really good um track operator and promoter seminar with uh um they had a panel there it was uh royce miller and uh bill bader and Oh God, the two other the two other gentlemen slipped my I can't think of their names, but it, I mean it was really really good and informative, um, and you know getting to do stuff like that is pretty cool. 
Um, so it, 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 there's a lot going on there, um, and you can get lost in there quick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you go this year? <laughs> uh, no, I didn't get a chance to go this year. House repairs popped up and kind of threw my whole fall off. So, yeah. Can't leave, can't leave my wife and my kid without hot water. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got to gotta take care of the house. Yeah. Um, yeah maybe but, maybe like, next year. We'll, yeah, we'll, see how, was, we'll see how this year goes. Well, maybe <laughs> this year and see how it goes. I was so. fortunate to go. I'm, I'm glad I got to go. And I'm, I'm hoping, hopefully, I will get to go again this season and kind of, I want to spend a little bit more time taking some more stuff in, maybe not so much running around, but you know how it is when you, you know, you're trying to talk to people that you deal with, you gotta, you gotta kind of put that, that the business part of it first. So. Yeah. Now going out there as a promoter, did you go out there just to kind of like get your name, you know, put, put names to faces, like you said, or were you yeah, going out? Um, I wanted to put, I wanted to put names to faces and, you know, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to see kind of what was the, what was the new, uh, what was the new stuff that they had out and all of that stuff. I mean, you kind of don't, you know, you know, PRI is not really anywhere that you're going to like put a deal together. If anything, you might confirm a deal or you maybe announce a deal, but you've pretty much had this stuff established before you get out there. But it's more of a it's more of a networking thing, and uh, you know, to see the latest parts and the latest you know gadgets and stuff like that. So, I, right. I, I, that was the that was the main purpose of me going. I just kind of wanted to put face to name, and uh, like I said, I wanted to to hang out with those guys and do the podcast. And so that was you know that was the driving force behind that. Very cool. Now, um, looking forward to twenty twenty three. Have you been contacted by any other tracks that might be interested in having your crew come in? Um, outside of outside of Maple Grove, uh, no, not not yet. I haven't. Um, I've. I think there's some other tracks interested. I just I have to. I have to look at it and kind of look at the schedule and look on what's going on around it and see if, how we can make it work. Cause I try to, I try to position us to, to get the best draw that we can. Um, and sometimes you, you can't always, you can't always do that. Um, it's just, there's a lot of racing going on and sometimes there's just going to be a date on top of it and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, because you are kind of at the mercy of the dates that the tracks want to give you. And, right. and you you got to kind of take them because if you don't, then you might not get the opportunity again. Right. Um, and I mean, as an independent promoter, when you're when you're a sanction, you might have a little bit more leeway. But for somebody like me, it's kind of you kind of got to work with what they give you. So, right. unfortunately, there's probably going to be some times where we're you know we have a conflicting date with somebody else. Um, we don't intentionally do it, but like I said, you have to kind of take what the track can give you. As a as a promoter and a and a driver and a racer, do you what's your opinion on taking all these sanctioning bodies, especially with us on the East Coast, um, and maybe trying to get everybody to work together so that you could have top sportsman racing, basically like from my my area, you know, New England, you know, all the way down into you know, your, your area, the Virginia, Maryland area, and maybe try to work together, you know, all, all of the different sanctioning bodies. I, I, I pitched this question to um, Rob Keister from Mid-Atlantic.90 um, right. and got his take on it. So I'm looking for, I'm looking for your, your input on it. Again, racer. I, I think it's a, I think it's a good idea if you can get everybody on board with, but it's a lot of different pieces in motion. You got different tracks and different, different organizations and stuff like that. But I, I would love to be able to, you know, sit down with everybody and, and everybody say, Hey, we're going to do this this week and we're going to do this this week. And, 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 you know, kind of work it out to where you're not stepping over each other and, 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 and everybody, you know, everybody's events can be supported. Cause I mean, honestly, we're all drawn from the same well. Um, right when when you when you when you get down to it i mean you know we're all kind of pulling from the same well 
the racing community to us is big, but on a whole, it's not big when you look at other forms of, you know, motorsports or other forms of sports or entertainment. So right. it would be nice to have a way for everybody to kind of work together and, you know, kind of, you know, try to stay off of each other's dates as much as you can. Some stuff is just not going to be avoidable. It's, it's just not going to be avoidable. But I think some of it could be. And, 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 and it would be nice to kind of do something cool, like uh, kind of like what they're doing with the World Series of Pro My Deal. It'd be nice to kind of do like one big race where you got cars from each organization coming and, and competing and kind of seeing who, you know, or it's maybe a couple organizations, yeah. you know, kind of like I say, if you did something like you guys that like your guys are, you know, north of me and I'm south of we all maybe we come together and do one big race with a, for a decent person, make it kind of a north type of south type of thing. Like I actually um, kind of briefly spoke with uh, Robert about that. Um, a little, a little bit. So that that may be something maybe we could, you know, try to work on for twenty twenty four. But it, it would it would be nice. And, and and you know, for me, for the sport, I think it would be good because you know, at the end of the day, and not to get political or anything, there there's people out here trying to take this away from us. So we have to be mindful of that, and everybody needs to work together to preserve what we love. And that's my take. On it. Um, quick question from Frank Volpe. He wants to know if your races are eighth mile or quarter. Uh, eighth mile. Eighth mile. All right. I mean, because I I've often thought about that. I've from a non-competitor point of view. You know, take let's see. We'll use Top Sportsman as the example, obviously, because that's your gig. You know, find somewhere that's the middle of the East Coast, so you can pull from Florida on up, and then you can pull from main on down and yep. try and get some together for you know whatever purse but get a shitload of cars and you know have some awesome racing yeah and just make it a you know promote the heck out of it and and, and make it you know fan friendly and you know that's why we try to do you know we try to do that type of stuff with our races and you know we try to when i'm not when my back is not killing me i try to you know, I try to throw shirts into the crowd and, 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 you know, I have great companies like Broads that give me stuff that, you know, I can do giveaways and kind of, you know, like I said, toss stuff up into the crowds after each round and, and you know, get the crowd into it and get the fans into it. Cause that's what it's all about, man. I mean, you know, I think we lose sight of the fact that at the end of the day, yeah, we want to race and we want it to be competitive, but it's gotta be entertaining too. Right. We should have Pete build you a t-shirt cannon. Yeah, I need a t-shirt cannon in the worst <laughs> way because <laughs> last year at Maryland, my back was killed. I mean, I look, I look really weak out there trying to throw shirts, and, <laughs> and then I and then I tried to hire a kid to do it, and then he couldn't come up because they were racing, and it just got it just got all out of whack. But a t-shirt cannon would be awesome. <laughs> oh. Well, I'll let, I'll let to get on him about it. Say so we'll, that'll give us a reason to come down and check it, check out your races. We'll hand deliver it to you if I, can get him, <laughs> if I can get him to do it. I would, I would appreciate it, man. I would definitely appreciate it. Um, no, you know, any, anything we can do to to kind of make the crowd get the crowd in it more, and, you know, make it better for the racer, make it better for the track, and. You know, that's, now, that's, obviously, that's, that, that's, that's a subject that's been talked about a lot. How do you get the people into the stands? You know, obviously, the tracks need to make money. Yes. You know, to pay their employees, pay the insurance, the light bill, you know, whatever, and so on. What do you see as the secret with top sportsman pro mod stuff of getting people in the stands? Because one of the things that I always said about look pro mod is that they're the they're the modern day altered. Sometimes they go right, sometimes they go left, and every once in a while you get lucky and they actually go right down the start. They go right down their track. Yeah, yeah. You think um, that's the big draw? 
I think so, man. Those those cars, from what I understand, are a handful to drive. Um, they're exciting. They're fast. Uh, they're still somewhat relatable because they have doors. Um, but I mean, I don't. I don't know what the what the secret is uh, to get more fans in. Um, I'm not, you know, this is my basically my third year doing this, so I'm. I'm still learning. Uh, I heard Bill Bader say, you know, he, like I said, he said, we got to remember we're in the entertainment business, not the racing business. So you got to look at it like that. You got to keep somebody entertained. And, you know, going to a drag race, that's a long day. So you have to, to, to keep the average person who may not necessarily be have a racing background, you have to be able to keep them entertained. Um, and make them want to come out and spend that type of money and sit there all day. And, you know, it's in the summertime and sometimes it's hot, and, you know, so you have to, you have to have some other stuff going on besides the on track action to keep them engaged. Right. Um, it's not like going to a NASCAR race where, you know, you're going to watch 300 laps of race and you'll be out of there and, eh, you know, three or four hours, it, you know, going to a drag race. We've all been there. We've all done it. It's an all day and sometimes an all night affair. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing. And, and so, what what is the answer to keep everybody in the stands? You you have to you have to make it. You you definitely have to make it entertaining and and, and to get them in the stands. I mean, <laughs> the average drag racing event does not pack the stands, and that's that's what we have to work on uh, as a whole. I think to yeah. get people in there. Um. Frank Volpe commented fireworks. Yeah, fireworks. fireworks are always good. Yeah. Yeah. One of the, again, looking back into things that I've read and heard, there's um, a thing called pack a track. Have you ever heard of pack a track? Uh, I don't, I don't know that I have. I know, um, are you talking about maybe where they do the, uh, where they just charge you for parking yeah you you bring you know you lo however many people you can put in your car yeah charge 20 bucks right you know and, whatever and, and, and it's basically and then, free itself for the pay for parking They're like like how adrl used to be. yeah yeah you yeah, know I mean, maybe, yeah maybe you know because maybe bump the hot dogs and the hamburgers and the drinks up 50 cents or a buck you know, but still people are going to think that, okay, I only got to, you know, I got me and six of my buddies in my van going to cost us 20 bucks to get in. We're golden. Yeah. So, you know? I mean, I think that, I think that works. Um, but in order for you to do that, you, you've got to have really good support to be able to take care of the cost of the event because you got to be able to pay the purse and, you know, like I said, the tracks got to make money somehow, which, you know, if you're selling out the stands, you know, they're definitely going to make money, but you're only making your money off of parking. You're not making your money off of whatever. And then I guess, you know, right. you got to increase on the races, but you're still going to have a, a shortfall there. So you, you, you've got to have enough support to be able to carry the event for that to work. But it, I mean, it's obviously a good model. I mean, it, it worked really, really well for ADRL for years. Um, yeah. It's funny you said that. I was going back looking the other night. I kind of went down this YouTube wormhole and was looking at some old videos and, and like every single one of their races, the, the stands were just loaded with people. And that's what I would love to see back in drag racing. Um, I went to an NHRA event at, at Virginia Motorsports Park a few years back. And it when they first came back there and it had sold out that it was awesome to be, you know, see that many people and be in the stands and it was that many people in the drag racing. It was, yeah. It was. Yeah, without the, you know, we've all said it a million times and we've said it a lot on this show, you know, with no butts in the seats, there's no cars on the track. Exactly. So, it's just a matter of trying to figure out, you know, again, what it is. And, you know, Norwalk, they've, they figured it out. They got it down to a science. That why that that guy's name should be the professor. It's some he's without a doubt one of the best in the business. Um, him 
And and that was a big reason why I went to the seminar. Just, you know, him and Royce Miller, they've forgotten more than I will ever know about promoting anything. So I to be able to be around them and, and soak up whatever I could, uh, it was a great experience for me. And I learned some things and, you know, I'm trying to apply to, you know, now. Um, the other thing I think we got to do in drag racing is kind of promote our drivers. We promote the cars, but we got to promote our drivers. Um, that's the, you know, that's the other thing. Uh, you look at something like Street Outlaws and, you know, they, they pack out wherever they go. And people love the cars and they love the people, the personalities. And we, I think sometimes in drag racing, we get a little too stiff. Um, you know, it's the same old top interview, top end interview every time. I want to thank, you know, such and such for sponsoring me and this and that. You know, every once in a while, you want to see somebody jump out the car and be like, yeah, I'm glad I loaded that guy up because. I've been trying to get his ass all year. You know, I mean, you, you got to bring that into, you know, it, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be anything personal. It can be a competition thing. You know, you competitors, you go for the juggler when you're on the track, off the track, you shake hands and you keep it moving. But it, a little back and forth would not hurt anybody. I don't think you, you could build these rivalries and that would get fans engaged and that would bring more people to, you know, people will want to come out and, and I want to see my favorite driver. I want, you know, I, I, I want to see Chris, where JP's ass out and, and and I'm coming out to see that and I'm going to buy a shirt and I'm going to, you know, try to get some stickers and, and you know, that type of thing. So I think that's, I think that's the direction that we need to go in this sport if we're going to preserve this sport. And, you know, I say that as a drag racing fan, it's been lifelong and I've been involved in drag racing one way or another since I was probably five years old. And uh, it, it's it, for me, it's a part of me. It's not just something I do. It's a part of my life. I've never not did anything that had anything to do with drag racing for right. my life. Like, we never even went on family vacations. It was like we went to the racetrack. That's what we did. That's what I thought was normal. Never really went on family vacation until after I got married. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you. And I, one of the things I personally think they should do I, I go back to a long time ago, back when they, they called it the Burger Wars. It was um, Force and uh, I think it was Cruz who had the McDonald's car. Yeah. One of Force's kids showed up at the shop with McDonald's. You know, had a cheeseburger, a fry, and a drink, whatever. Walked in, sat down, and... The, the story goes that he had uh, the John Force absolutely lost his mind because, you know, there was such a, a banging of the heads between him and um, Cruz. Oh, yeah. With the McDonald's car. And it became stuff of legends, you know. Everything now is a little too corporate. That's probably the best way to put it. And it would be nice to have a track mic down at the end when they do the winner, do the interview. You know, even if you, you let's, we'll use you. You did an interview, you know, you had ESPN or Fox or whatever there interviewing you, but also if there was a mic that was live to the track. Yeah. So the people at the track could actually hear it, you know, and like I said, you know, I, I stomped that boy for seven ways from Sunday. You know, people would lose their minds here. And exactly. Like and, it, and it would give, and you know, you got to have some guys. I mean, for, obviously, John Force is one of the best in the business. I mean, his name draws fans like nobody else. So, and, and he's established that reputation from being a fierce competitor, you know, willing to, willing to cross the finish line on fire, um, a motor emotional, you know, great interview, um, just off the chart. So I think you got to have that stuff. And, and I mean, I understand the corporate side of it because you got to have dollars because they, they, they run on dollars, um, no doubt about it. And, it. and it's an expensive sport. But I feel like that these guys, you know, the sponsors handcuff them so bad to where they can't actually show their true emotion or be their self and because they're, they're so worried about I'm going to lose this deal or what is somebody going to think? And and I, I think if we could bring out that raw emotion, I mean, I, you, obviously you don't want people out there fist fighting or going crazy or, 
you know, right. a bunch of profanity. But you know, you know, show a guy. You're not supposed to be happy when you lose. You're not supposed to be. You know, if if somebody somebody gets loses, it's, it's not a bad thing. That's it, it's it's just they're driven and they want to win. And, and if you roll through a gate with a race car and you're not there to win, what are you there for? You might not always win, but you should have in your mind uh, that I came to win. I, when I take my car out, when I roll through the gate, my mind is intent on winning. It doesn't always work out that way. <laughs> it probably doesn't work out that way 98% of the time, but my mindset is that I'm going to win that day. Because if I'm not, if I don't have that mindset, there is no point in me going. Right. And and that's just, you know, and I, and I feel like every driver kind of feels like that, but I feel like that they kind of, they kind of had that because whether it's sponsored or whether it's whatever. And so if we could find a way as a sport, as a whole, to, to highlight that emotion and bring that out. I think that would bring more fans into it and it would be beneficial for everybody. And I'm not just saying that because I promote racism. I'm saying that because I have a love for drag racing, first and foremost, over everything. You know, promoting is something that I do, but it's by far not how I eat. So it's not a money thing for me. It's a, I do it because I love it. Now, I right. don't want to lose everything I got doing it, but, <laughs> but I, you know, I don't, it, it's not, it, I'm not dependent on it basically to pay my bills. I do this for the love of the sport. So you're, you're a fan. You're a competitor and you're a promoter. Yeah. Yeah. So I try to merge all three of those worlds and think about it. What would be the, you know, I think about as a competitor, what would I want? What type of race would I want? As a fan, what type of race would I want to see? As a track, what type of race makes the most sense for me to make a little bit of money? And that's, that's what I try to bring together. Right. And it's, it's a juggling act, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm, I'm not the best and you know, I would never claim to be. Um, I just try to do what I think will work. And if it doesn't work, I go back and, you know, go back to the drawing board and refine it and try to do something else and, and make it good. Now, am I correct in saying that you guys are kind of aligned a little bit more with pro, the pro mod guys this year, like Northeast outlaw pro mods and such? Um, well, I will say that every event that every event that we have, they are there running to. Um, I don't want, <laughs> I, I don't want to, I, I'm not in a position to speak for Northeast, but so I don't want to say a line, but we do enjoy being able to run at the events that they run at because it's a, they have a really good show and, yeah. you know, it, it, it's, it's for me, it's an honor to be able to run alongside them. So yeah, I, I, I like what they're doing and they're great people over there. Um, I, I talk to john from time to time and uh and mel and all of those and don and all of them they're, they're, they're just a they're just a great group of people man and, and 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 they do it because they love the sport too you know and and you know they've been around for 30 years so how could you not they are doing you know, something right yeah yeah it it would seem to me from that outsider looking in that a lot you know you guys getting aligned so to speak benefits both of you yeah um i mean if i will say if we have an opportunity to to do something like that i would definitely jump on it and try to make it happen and and there'll probably be some conversations in the future um we we might you know i don't want to you know speak out of turn or anything but right. we, we might look at trying to do something you know, for 2024 to where we're more, we kind of are more affiliated with them. So we'll, we'll gotcha. see. We'll see what the future holds. Need need somebody needs to resurrect the Wild Bunch. Remember the Wild Bunch? Uh, vaguely. Scott, Scott J. Zach and those guys. Yeah, I heard of them, but I don't. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm I'm showing my age then by that one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, they had, you know, Scott Jay's at Camp Stanley, um, Tommy Howe, 
God, I know I'm forgetting at least one, two, maybe three more, but they had some of the craziest stuff, you know, uh, an injected Jeep that ran in the, yeah. in the mid sevens and, you know, Scott Jazak with his small block, you know, wrote, um, altered and just, uh, just crazy stuff. It would be killer to see something along those lines come back. Yeah, it's, people don't do that type of stuff no more. And, 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 and we need that. Um, you know, we need that because fans get up for stuff like this. Something unusual, but it's fast and it's going out there and going down the track. And, you know, you obviously don't want anybody having any on track incidents, but, it, you know, it's a little squirrely and it's like, you know, that, 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 that stuff gets people up. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't personally know Camp Stanley, but I've seen him around uh, at tracks and that, that's just, I, I can tell that dude's just cool uh, <laughs> just by, you know, and, and I, I've seen some of the stories and everything. I mean, he's, he's, he's basically a legend of the sport. So, yeah. Not many people will take a Ford Taurus station wagon, turn it into a supercharged alcohol burning race car. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So 2023 is looking strong and you guys are making a little bit of a move, a little bit more. No, more north than where you normally are with heading to Maple Grove. So how about the companies that are helping you guys out all this year? Um, for this year, uh, like I said, we, uh, MSR, Mark Smith, Mark Smith Racing, uh, he came on board. He came on board last year. He's staying with us this year. Uh, Induction Solutions has kind of been on board with us from the start. Uh, Brodix has been on board with us from the start. Um, uh, Race Jack Solutions, uh, my buddy Kenny Abbott, he's, he, he came on board this year. Um, he's helping us out. A uh, company actually out of New York, um, Place and Construction, they've, they've helped us out uh, the past couple of years. So they've, they actually teamed up with um, Race Jack Solutions. They're actually going to be our co-presenting sponsors for the Maple Grove Race. So that was huge. Uh, competition Products. Um, They've been on board with us. Uh, we're going. We're working out a deal, probably with Winlight Bets, to do a contingency deal. Uh, I got to get all the details about how that's going to work. But um, they're going to be on board. Uh, NGK. There's a lot. Um, uh, Thompson's Automotive. They're staying on. Um, they've helped us out in the past. Honeycut Glass has helped us out. Rob Honeycut with the Pro Mod and, and uh, Thompson's Automotive. That's Donnie Thompson. He actually crew chiefs for Rob, so uh, that's the affiliation there. They're, they're, they they uh, they they've been on board for a few races and they're helping us out at least on the first race. Um, it uh, Sanhuff Sanhuff's helped us out a lot, um, so they're they're back this year helping us out with some things. BLP has came on this year. Um, they're going to be actually our number one qualifier and our number one qualifier bounty sponsor for Maple Grove. Um, so we're real excited to, to have them on and, and, and try to bring some awareness to them. And hopefully we can, you know, form some long-term relationships with, with all of these companies. Um, I feel like I'm missing something. I don't have a list in front of me and I probably should. So if I miss anybody, I didn't do it on purpose. Um, I just wasn't exactly prepared. Uh, Page Racing Engines, they've been on board with us from the start. Um, and they're usually they're usually um, our number one qualifier. You know, they usually pay that bonus. So they're on board with us for our first race. And um, we'll probably be back on board with us uh, for, our, for our third race. A uh, couple of local companies, um, Riverside North, they're on board for our first race. Uh, Indy Winston Trucking. Uh, Yates Detailing and Tibbs Paving, they, they, those are all longtime supporters. Um, so they, they've they kind of been with us from the beginning. Um, and they kind of stayed with us. And we've had some other supporters that kind of, that, that were with us and, and, you know, some of them decided not to be with us anymore and we bought on some new ones. But um, yeah, for this year, I mean, we look pretty good. We do still have uh, some marketing opportunities left. So if anybody's interested in, in, in advertising with us and, and trying to give us a shot at helping to promote your brand and get your name out there a little bit more, maybe get in a little bit different markets, uh, you can hit me up on the JNR page or on my personal page, and uh, I'd be happy to talk to you. Um, we are very, very reasonable. Um, and 
we are a hundred percent in favor of the racers and i feel like our program is a great way to give back to the racers that support your company so like i said if anybody's interested we do have opportunities left for 2023 and i will be glad to talk to you about that um we have a we have a host of great sponsors that are supporting us now um and uh but we are always looking for as much help uh also, look, before I forget, uh, with the bubble soap, they've been on board with us for the beginning. If you're interested in any any handmade soap, and this is you know natural products, uh, hit up their hit up their Facebook page. You can order it online. They ship worldwide. Um, it's very good products. I use it. Full disclosure, it is my wife's company, but <laughs> I'm not just I'm not just saying that because it's my wife. It, it she it, it, it she puts a lot of time and effort into this and and. It, she does a really good job. She works. She works the tail off at this. Um, she's in there working at it right now, um, and you know, so it, it, it's a very good brand. So for the ladies out there, they she's got products for men too. But for the ladies out there, she I know she has something that you'll like and keep you smelling good and keep you clean. So um, <laughs> sorry, I had to plug that. And I, I got to give a shout out to my buddy Jay Warren, NC Pro Modder. He he's a uh, He's kind of been on with us from the start and he he streams all of our events. Um great guy, uh personal friend. So, you know, that's uh that's kind of where we're at with that deal. But like I said, if, if anybody would like to get involved, uh don't hesitate to contact and we'll make it happen. Right, cool. All right, one one more quick question. It's something I didn't even think of until you just mentioned it. Talk a little bit about your bounty hunter, your bounty program. Oh, the the qual the number one qualified bounty. So, you know, every race or sanction that you have that ha is based on a qualified field generally has a number one qualifier bonus. And in some instances, it could be the same guy winning it at every race if he shows up and he's the fastest guy and can't nobody outrun. So what we did, and it's not really a new idea. It's excuse me it's been done before but what i did was i said well why don't we put a bounty on that guy so if you beat the number one qualifier you get 300 bucks doesn't matter when you beat him if you beat him first round you get 300 bucks second round 300 bucks finals you get 300 bucks and it's just a it, it's not to put a target on the back but it's just a little bit a little bit more incentive to get guys to come out and kind of race hard because that's what we're looking for we want guys to come out and race hard i mean we want the racing to be competitive and you know we want it to be so now that being said if you are the number one qualifier at one of our events and you win you get that 500 dollars for number one qualifier plus the three thousand or four thousand whatever we're paying that week and you get the 300 if nobody wow. beats you. Yeah. So, you know, because I feel like if you go through all of that and nobody beats you, because they're going to be trying to get you to get that $300, um, you know, <laughs> I feel like you deserved it and you earned it. So you could potentially walk out of, you know, just like our April race, and that's April 28th through 30th um, at MIR, you could potentially walk out of there with a four grand to win. So you could potentially walk out of there with, uh, what forty eight hundred dollars? Yeah, forty eight hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that. no, nothing to sneeze at at all. I mean, for a sixteen car field, it's four rounds of racing. Yep. Um. That's so cool. yeah, that's, I like, that's I like kinda, the way you got that set up. Yeah, that's kind of the thing behind the bounty deal. Um, it seems to be received pretty well. I haven't had any complaints about it. Um, yet, but. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we like it but I, I we might look at we might look at doing something i guess if for me i have a group of guys who are probably going to support me and come to everything i do and then sometimes there's different cars and some guys aren't going to come so we don't always like all of my number one qualifiers have been different for every race i feel like if i get into a situation where the same guys winning over and over again, then we might do something different. Um, actually, Mark from MSR had a good idea. He was like, maybe do like a, a draw, just a random draw of 16 
put 16 numbers in a hat and do a random draw and say, hey, you get this 500 bucks, you know, I, in qualifying, just to, just to kind of make it a little different or something like that. So that might be something we look at doing in the future. Um, but, you know, right now we, we have great sponsors that, that want to step up and support the number one qualifier bonus. So I'm going to keep it around as long as they want to, they want to do it, and I'm going to keep the bounty around as long as they want to do it. That's very cool. One of the things that we talked about close to the beginning was getting all the top sportsmen guys together. I hope that is something that you and your your friends really pursue because I got I I have a feeling that would be a huge deal. Not only you know you have your independent guys that run your stuff, you have the um, the PDRA people, and you know obviously the NHRA top sportsmen guys. Yeah, especially on the East Coast, it seems like we have the larger draw of top sportsman cars. Yeah, and you look up and down the East Coast. I mean, we if if you looking for a top sportsman car, you it, it's here. I mean, from the fastest to the middle to the whatever. So I, I would love to do that, man. And 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 I'm, you know, I'm a supporter of everybody. I'm going to probably. Just with my personal car this year, I haven't exactly figured out exactly where everywhere I'm racing at, but I'm going to support as much as I can when I can, and that's everybody. That's PDRA. That's uh, I want to I want to come run some top thirty two stuff because that, that looks like a really good program. Um, they've got some four fifty stuff they do at Farmington. I want to go down there and try that. I got some four seventy stuff they do at Mooresville. I want to try my hand at that. So I, I and there are some local things that I'm going to run too. So I'm going to try my best to support everybody. And, and and to me, that's what it's all about. I'm not anybody who wants to come to my race is welcome to. We don't claim anybody. We don't say these are our cars or whatever. It's just if you show up and you got 150 bucks and you can qualify, you are welcome to race and I'm going to treat you like family and we're going to race. We're going to have a good time. And at the end of the day, I'm going to give you cash and a big check and take your picture and tell you, thank you for coming. And to I, me, that's I think that would about. be an awesome idea. I really do. Yeah. I, I would love to, I would love to get, I would love to get just a big, you know, that that's my goal just to get a big, big, big number of top sportsman cars and a big, big, ridiculously big purse and just have them go out there and battle it out. And you probably even get some of the pro mod guys tune their cars down and come want to no, play No, they with can't us. be come, coming in here trying to cherry pick, man. We can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, and hey, and you never know. You might... minute, though, there's, there's some top sportsman cars out there that could jump over there and qualify in pro mod. Right. There's, oh, there's, yeah. there's, there's, a, there's quite a few. Yeah, um, and you might even get some of the guys out of Canada too. I mean, Cedric bolio has got a brand new car ready to roll. Yeah, so. that's definitely something we need to work on. So, if, if any other sanction or promoters are interested in that, man, get at me uh, and let's see if we can put something together. I would love to do that. All right, Keister, if you're listening, get with him. I feel so. like me and him gonna make something happen, though. I, I'm a we gonna we, me and him gonna talk some more. We are gonna make something happen. We we both kind of wrapped up in our own deal for this year, but I we might be able to make something happen for 2024. So. I would definitely be down to go into that. I appreciate it. All right, if they want to check out your events, your news, whatnot, where does everybody find you, JP? Uh, JNR Promotions Facebook page or on JP Miller's personal page. Um, and we try to plaster it. We try to we try to put up something every day. Um, and my contact information is there, so you can contact me. Um, uh, and just that's where we're at. Um, and also, like I said, I, I co-host Fast Brock's podcast, so we're on that like every other week. Um, I think we'll, we'll probably have a new episode dropping this week sometime, I think. Um, so if you want to check that out, uh, you're welcome to check that out. That's kind of a little different. We kind of just talk about that. That's basically Top Sports and Top Drags. Uh, top Drags, guys, uh, I'm trying to put something together for you. I, I, people keep on asking me, so it probably won't be this year, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> I, did, I didn't even think of that when we talked about getting all these, all your different 
top sportsmen, top dragster guys together, and that that would be a cool addition too. Yeah, and then maybe have maybe have the winners from each class, like I said, like they do at a couple other tracks, you know, in the Midwest, have them run each other. That would be a you know for like a little bit more bonus. That's kind of my ultimate goal, a big race that way. So, like I said, if anybody's interested in trying to make that happen, man, or any companies, man, get, get at me. I, I think it'll Contact be him. Contact him. Make it happen. <laughs> so, as long as it's somewhere where it's warm. If it's in the spring yeah. or in the fall, it's got to be someplace warm. Yeah, it's got to be <laughs> got to be warm and we got some good weather. I don't want to do anything when it's the cold and... <laughs> <laughs> or when it's 110 and 100 percent humidity so. yeah all right jp as always my friend good to talk to you keep that stuff keep the information coming i'll keep sharing it out too and uh have a great night thanks for coming on and hanging out all right thank you man i appreciate you having me on uh, no problem buddy we'll talk to you again soon i'm sure okay all right everybody jp miller our guest for tonight on races news network Bug, bug him. Make this, tell him this race has got to happen. So tell him Chris sell you. Tell him I say you. He'll get sick of hearing my name. So make him get sick of hearing my name is what I really should say. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So. All right, everybody. JP, have a great night. Everybody, we right. are out of here. I want to thank TSR Racing Products for joining the, the RNN live team and uh, Hoops Fire Prevention as well. We will be back in two weeks. Like I said, we're going to take February 14th off because I don't think there's anybody out there who wants to look at this face, except for my wife, on Valentine's Day. So have a great night. Everybody that got their awards at um, Mouse is cooperating. The NHRA Northeast Division banquet this past weekend in Hershey. Congratulations to all of you. Again, all the information for the awards banquet special winners and all the uh, news info picks are on our page, Racers News Network Live on Facebook. Have a great night, everybody. We will talk to you soon.